Good evening, uh, and we are uh, covering the topic this evening of um, navigating a first event. We're going to record this and get this out onto our YouTube channel uh, for coaches, teams, etc., who couldn't make it. Uh, as always, uh, please feel free to email me, uh, Chris Osborne. I can drop my email in the chat, and of course, uh, I will have this on the um, the video as well. Uh, and um, real quick, uh, a quick update uh, on our uh, legislation work that we've been doing. House Bill 1382 passed a major hurdle today. It um, it was passed by the House um, after a third reading, which means now that's it's passed by the House. And so it will move on to the Senate in March and we will keep you all apprised. So Big thing will be to um, reach out and find your state senators and invite them to your shop, learn more about FIRST, invite them to competitions, uh, just reach out, uh, even do a phone call or an email with them, share uh, the important stories you all have as a team and how this can, uh, this legislation, not only can help our existing programs uh, based in schools for sustainability purposes and also recognizing that the the coaching stipend is an important piece, uh, but also how important this is for uh, those schools uh, in underserved and underrepresented areas that uh, don't have a chance uh, to do this and that this could provide that lift up. So anyway, keep working on that. More to come. We're very excited and it's going to take us all. So today we're going to talk about navigating uh, a first event. I'm going to pop over and uh, share my screen. And uh, so hopefully you can see uh, my PowerPoint slide deck here. I'll uh, try to make this the slide a little bit bigger. So from load in to load out, navigating an FRC event. Uh, district events for FRC are uh, two day events with uh, an evening going into it. Um, we'll go into the timing here in a minute. But um, so as we look at this, the big thing about our events from the, the moment we arrived, the moment we leave, and honestly, hopefully uh, we carry this on every day of our lives is, is the core idea of gracious professionalism. There on the left, Dr. Woody Flowers, and then of course on his right, uh, Dean Kamen. Uh, this is the ethos of first. It's a way of doing things that um you know the slide i'll let people read <laughs> uh, i won't read slides but i will say dr flowers was often uh quoted as saying that you know we want to make sure we're behaving like our uh, grandparents are watching us uh, and so uh, this is about lifting up others this is about competing intensely but not at the expense of everyone else uh, so uh, we, we hope that everything that we talk about tonight and everything we look at for our events this spring, and, and of course, as always, that uh, we are trying to live out this core ethos. So let's take a look at load in. So if it's a, uh, if it's a Friday, Saturday competition, Thursday will be load in um, and uh, pits will typically open at 5 p.m. Then if it's a Saturday, Sunday event, Friday would be load in again with doors opening at 5 p.m. for teams to begin setting up their pits. Uh, some teams will bring a skeleton crew uh, for that that first evening. Uh, if if it's a local event for you, of course, the, the team uh, that's a it's an easier one in terms of driving back and forth. But of course, if your team is going to be further away and it has a hotel stay, uh, one way to kind of save some money on that first night is to bring a skeleton crew of students and mentors and uh, to set up the pits. And then the bulk of the team can come in the next day. Uh, you are welcome, however, to bring your whole team. Uh, the uh, Sometimes we will have teams show up that evening um, and we will have things for them to do uh, in terms of helping us get set up or help uh, if we get the field set up in time, help run practice matches with field reset, et cetera. Uh, most venues will not have concessions set up uh, on load-in night. Uh, we will not guarantee that there will be any concessions on load-in night. So keep that in mind. If you are arriving around 5 p.m. with your whole team, you're, you're going to want to make arrangements for dinner. Uh, please be patient and GP as many teams are 
arriving and trying to load in all at the same time. So as you bring your trailers, your pickup trucks, et cetera, uh, some of our uh, facilities that we're competing in will have only maybe one or, or two places to kind of come in and out of. Uh, or one drive. Uh, safety glasses are required in the pet area uh, during setup and teardown. So as soon as we open um, at 5 p.m., when you're in the pit area, safety glasses on and just wear them out the door uh, at the end of, end of the event, as long as you're in the pit area. Uh, as you are setting up um, your pit, you can send your head coach over to pit admin to check in. Checking in, you coaches, you are printing your roster out of the first dashboard uh, because in the um, first dashboard for FRC, because students, if they're 18, they have to do it themselves or the parents or guardians, et cetera, of students under the age of 18, they can actually sign the first consent release and the first Indiana consent release in the dashboard and that's for FRC only, uh, but you are gonna wanna make sure that that's done. You're gonna print that roster coaches. Uh, you can go over, there's a button that says, manage contacts, print roster. You're gonna wanna go through and make sure all those, uh, next to all those names are check boxes, check marks. Uh, any red X's means that there's something missing, either a first dash, uh, I'm sorry, a first consent and release form or a, a district level like first Indiana consent and release form. The, um, a lot of times if you're having an issue with the consent and release where a student or a parent has said, we've, we've signed them up, uh, we've signed the consent release forms. We don't know why you're not seeing it in the dashboard. Most of the time, about 95%, probably or more of the time, it's because the student has multiple accounts set up. Uh, if you have a, a veteran student, maybe a junior or senior, chances are they have two maybe even three different accounts set up. And the very first one they created, you're seeing where they don't have this year's consent release signs, but they went in and created a new account. Parents have signed everything, but they've not taken that new account and applied to your team with it. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, parents can um, send requests to have multiple accounts merged. Uh, you can always send those emails to FRC teams at firstinspires.org or call team support at first headquarters. Uh, first Indiana Robotics, we don't have any control over your dashboard or the ability to um, uh, manipulate or work with in uh, the dashboard. You, you do need to call first headquarters. Uh, if it's an issue and you're still having problems, um, please reach out to me though. Uh, I can call first uh, headquarters on your behalf and help you out with those things. Uh, once you're checked in, then you seek out an inspector. They'll be wearing uh, green hats, light, light green hats, and uh, we'll have multiple inspectors at each event uh, to get you checked in and inspected. Uh, you're going to also want to find the wireless radio encryptor for your Wi-Fi radio. It's usually located near the inspector scale, uh, or sometimes it may be located near pit admin Uh where we also have what's called spare parts. We'll go into that. And if you're a veteran team, something you could do to help us out a lot is check in with our rookie teams uh, and make sure they're doing okay and getting inspected uh, and going through all the processes uh, to get ready for the event. That's a big help. Uh, and it's a great thing for maybe some students who are uh, there, but maybe not on that skeleton crew, not getting the robot ready. That's something they can do. We know you'll be busy pit scouting early, but that first night for check-in, uh, helping us with uh, rookie teams or especially maybe newer teams with uh, rookie coaches is a big help. Uh, there will be a practice field. <coughs> Pardon me, sorry. Please be nice to the practice field. It's usually wooden elements uh, the, and the practice fields aren't necessarily designed to take the same kind of beating as the main field. So please be careful. And also, uh, under that whole guise of the ethos of gracious professionalism, keep in mind if you're out using some of the practice field elements that you're sharing time on the field and not uh, not hogging it. We will have uh, folks out there monitoring the practice field area just to make sure everybody is taking turns. Um, match schedules, 
will not be distributed until every team is checked in. So if you come around asking are the practice schedules yet out yet, um, the answer most likely is no, because not everybody's checked in. As soon as everybody is checked in and uh, we're given the green light to generate those, those schedules will be generated and then we will come around with one copy for every team. And then there will usually be a couple of copies at pit admin feel free to take pictures of those start to post them on social media. So your, your fans back home know when you're competing. This is a sample schedule. <clears throat> You'll kind of see a competition schedule Friday, March 4th uh, pits open inspections and then uh optional tour of the Dean's List and uh, what used to be called the Chairman's Awards, which is now the Impact Interview Rooms. So anybody who is uh, going to be interviewing for Dean's List or uh, is going to be signing up to um, present for the Impact Award, uh, which we hope every team is nominating, uh, has nominated uh, two students, and we'd love to see as many teams as possible uh, um, signing up every year for the Impact Award. Uh, so you there will be optional tours. So that first night, the pits will close at 10 p.m. So load in night, uh, you'll see there 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And at what we really want there is uh, it's not 10 p.m. Then you're shutting down and then you're you know putting things away, things like that. It is 10 p.m. There should no longer be anyone in the pits. Uh, so right at 10 p.m., everyone should be out. Uh, staff and, and key volunteers will do a final walkthrough lights out uh, and then that'll be it until the next day go back home go back to your hotel wherever get a good night's rest for the next day of competition uh, then you can see uh, at our competitions on the two days of competition then doors always open at 8 a.m uh, for competition on the first day uh, competitions will go from 8 a.m uh, to roughly 8 p.m. is when pits will close. Matches will usually wrap up. Um, the first day of matches usually wrap up around 7. So you got about an extra hour if you need to work on anything in your pits. But again, that 8 p.m. Uh, pit closure is out the door. Um, and uh, we are we're making a final walkthrough right at 8 and uh, closing it down. Uh, then it, again, going back home, going back to your hotel, whatever, and getting a good night's rest. Uh, that that good night's rest is an important key uh, for safety. We want everyone well rested. Uh, we know these are long, stressful days uh, of competition. And then finally, on the second day, again, doors will open at 8 a.m. And uh, and then what we hope then to see on a final uh, competition day is um, that uh, around six by 6 p.m., the uh, no later than 6 p.m., the final awards would be handed out. And, uh, and then um, as soon as possible after that is when we would hope um, uh, folks are out the door and on their way home. Um, and, uh, and maybe even earlier than that. So the places at FRC events that you all should know about that, uh, and kind of for who. So pit admin, this will be teams, uh, coaches, uh, sometimes parents come by, but Really, what you're going to see here at Pit Admin, this we will always have this staffed. And if a team, for example, let's say you forgot something or you need something and it's a wrench or a specific part, well, you can come to Pit Admin and we can make a general announcement. Uh, you can write it down on a little piece of paper and say, we need a, a certain kind of wrench and we will take that, whoever's working, and make an announcement and say, team one, two, three, four needs to borrow a quarter inch socket wrench. And in about 30 seconds, you will have 12 of them. Um, and uh, But then also pit admin will have other information, uh, sometimes usually regarding um, impact interview signups, Dean's List interview signups. Uh, and it will be important also just to be paying attention to those uh, pit admin announcements uh, because sometimes it's about queuing, uh, but there are other announcements that happen during the weekend and it'll be key for somebody in your pits to kind of hear what's going on. Volunteer check-in, it's for our volunteers. <laughs> and uh, this is where they can check in and get their volunteer shirt, get their volunteer bat, their name tag badge um, and other um, things that they need for their volunteer experience. Uh, the practice field, uh, that will usually be close to the pits. Um, 
And if for some reason, because of the facility and we're in, if it's not, just make sure you know where the practice field is. And, um, and that practice field usually remains open right up until uh, alliance selections um, and going into the playoffs. And then that begins to get torn down. The field, of course, that will usually be in the main gymnasium. Uh, and uh, safety glasses, anytime you are inside the stanchions, um, in the main gym at one of our events close to the field, you need to be wearing safety glasses. If you are outside the stanchions, in the stands, et cetera, you do not need to be wearing safety glasses. Uh, the question box, the question box it will be marked on the field, uh, on the scoring table side. There will be two question boxes. This is where if a student or if a, if a team has a question about a referee's call, or just something that happened in a match in general, uh, it could be a, a scoring question, a, a penalty question, then a student uh, or students go to the question box. Uh, coaches, adults, parents do not uh, yell at, question, uh, or really just in any way, shape or form, engage in conversation with our referees around calls that were made or scoring issues. The students do that, uh, and then they do it again in that um, core ethos of gracious professionalism. The uh, scholarship row, anybody can stop by there. Uh, we'll, we'll, at our events, we'll have some of our uh, fantastic scholarship partners uh, that will be providing information. Uh, and those are always on the first day of a competition. So if it's a Friday, Saturday event, it'll be on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it'll be on Saturday, that first day, scholarship row, sometimes will also be sponsor tables. Uh, the judges room, only for the judges. So uh, no volunteers, no teams, no coaches, et cetera. Uh, the event room, this is for staff and key volunteers, uh, no one else. The volunteer room is for the volunteers. Uh, this is usually where we um, provide them some space, um, snacks, uh, water, et cetera, uh, and a place to um, relax a little bit between the time. And then uh, quiet rooms, if we uh, do have a quiet room at our events, we have been trying to do this. Um, uh, anyone can utilize the, the quiet room. People at an event. So pit admin, and these are all volunteers. So let's also keep that in mind. <laughs> our volunteers are crucial uh, to the success of our events. Um, and they uh, they are not being paid and they work really hard. And sometimes they are uh, driving themselves and paying their own way uh, to stay um, in hotels, et cetera, to help bring these fantastic events. So pit admin, uh, this person or people uh, will be making announcements in the pits um, that, you know, it's that, but they will also be there. Um, sometimes it's where we'll keep lost and found. Um, they'll have, uh, they will usually also have a radio. And so if you do have questions, uh, they can usually try to find somebody. Or if there's been an incident of some kind, uh, they can also be sort of that first line of, of a person for the event to then get a hold of our event manager. Uh, if it's a medical, like a um, an accident in the pits where a student's been hurt or a non-medical incident, uh, like a youth protection violation of some kind or some type of other non-medical incident, we will want to get the event manager involved, the appropriate folks. Sometimes that first person you might see in the pits might be pit admin. Team queuing. Uh, these volunteers are helping us keep that event on time. So um, it is important to know your schedule. It's important to know then watching the match uh, numbers go by, the Pit admin will often be announcing that uh, we are queuing match 17. If you're in match 17, you, you should already be out there. Uh, if you're in match 18, then you know they're queuing match 17. So you need to be thinking pretty soon about heading out toward the field. Also, just kind of keep that in mind too. Just judge the timing. Sometimes uh, our facilities, the pit, it's just right next to the main gym. And so you've got a little bit extra time or sometimes it might be a little bit of a walk. Uh, so keep that in mind. Judges, uh, there are gonna be lots of judges. 
at our events. Um, and, um, and I, uh, I need to update the slide deck because, uh, it says, even though judging will be remote, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, there will be lots of judges in person. They will be wearing, uh, blue polos, kind of like the one I'm wearing this evening. Um, and, uh, they will be in the stands. They will be alongside the field. They'll be coming into the pits. They'll be, they'll be all over the event. Uh, they'll be talking to students. They'll be conducting interviews in the pit, out by the field, et cetera. Um, and when you see our judges, uh, the, the best thing you could do for us is thank them profusely for volunteering. Uh, at referees, uh, again, only students can have ask our referees for clarification. You will see our referees will be wearing the black and white striped shirts, but then you will also see one of our referees wearing a black and yellow yellow on the top and black shirt. That is our head referee. Uh, so um, keep that in mind as you're checking out uh, and making sure you know who those folks are. And again, thanking them is great. Our event manager, this person is going to oversee the event and they're going to be able to know if there's a problem, who to talk to, where best to solve it. And, they'll, and often too, if there's some type of facility issue, uh, if they're not our person that is linked directly to the facility, they will have uh, contact to the facility uh, to, um, to get those folks in to, to help us. The field supervisor, this person really oversees setup and teardown of the field. The FTA and the FTAA, if there is one at the event, this is our field technical advisor. Their main job is to keep the event running on time uh, and running smoothly. They are technical uh, advisors and they can help with robot uh, connection issues. And so, especially if you're, if you're having any kind of robot field issues, the FTA, and you will see them, they will have a special shirt that says FTA on it. Uh, and they were out there visible, easy to find. So any kind of communication issue, if you're going up, uh, you're getting ready for a match and you've got your robot out there, but for some reason you're not connecting, make sure you wave down and get the FTA over there. Because uh, if, if you don't and they start the match, the match is on. Um, but the FTA can come over and help uh, and, and hold uh, the start of the match to help you. The CSA, the Control System Advisor, uh, this volunteer is usually in the pits to help you with technical issues. These folks um, have been around FRC. They know these robots. They know the technology. Um, and they can, uh, they can help you out. The MC game announcer, uh, the MC is announcing and uh, the game announcer kind of does the play by play. The MC goes out and introduces the teams. There are, you know, they keep things fun and exciting the whole time uh, we're there uh, and, uh, and make announcements. So please make sure you, you pay attention to what uh, they're talking about. The lead robot inspector and robot inspectors. Uh, these are the folks who are going to inspect your robots. Student ambassadors. We will need student ambassadors at our events. We're going to have VIP events. We're going to have folks visiting who are considering starting teams. Um, we will have announcements made at each of the events on where and when you can sign up uh, to go get a little bit of training to be a student ambassador. And then we would just ask for certain availability. Usually it's on day one of the competition, but it also might be a little bit on day two. Mostly day one. Um, how do you report something that happens? Um, you, there is the, um, there's a medical incident. If you're injured, you need to ask for an EMT or med medical staff on site at the event. Um, if it's serious, of course, we would call 911. Um, and uh, we do need to file uh, medical uh, incident reports. If it's non-medical, like a youth protection concern, uh, any violation of the first code of conduct, uh, concerns of sexual physical assault, concerns of bullying, hazing, or harassment, volunteer role concerns, et cetera. We want to fill out the non-medical incident report. Um, and I, in the video description link on the YouTube video that I, I'll do, I'll put a link out there for this. Uh, but first has a web-based system now for that. And uh, But now event-related concerns you should not report using this form. Feedback about, sorry, feedback about game day, um, rule changes, award descriptions, 
These instead should be by sending an email. Like, why did we not get this award? Or we want feedback or um, the we didn't like this call or why was this done? Uh, it, the, it, the, it took too long, et cetera. Uh, or we don't like the rule change. You'll send emails to first robotics competition at firstinspires.org. Um, keep in mind that match results and award results are final and there is no review. Uh, concerns that are more urgent and can only be addressed at the event, such as immediate safety issues or event rules violations like seat saving, uh, those need to be addressed at the event to the event manager. Uh, again, one of the big rules teams, make a note of this, uh, in the administrative manual, no saving seats at first events. Help at an event. Uh, we are always seeking help um, at our events. We would love to have uh, teams. If you if you have people taking pictures, photographers, we need all sorts of help. Field reset, uh, getting down and getting that field reset quickly. We can keep matches running. Um, then uh, your team can also help us keep an eye on teams that may be struggling. So uh, offer teams assistance, help them in their pit, offer to share scouting data, um, offer to share how you do things. We're going to have young teams and rookie teams at these events you're helping them through this process, especially that first competition for these folks, really helps. Uh, you are our best uh, trainers and teachers out there. Some generic rules for events. Uh, no Wi-Fi hotspots at first events. Uh, this includes any area of the building, pits, field area, et cetera. Wi-Fi hotspots can interfere with robot performance and field performance. So please make sure you pass on in the pits. Please do not set up a monitor and have a hotspot going so that you can watch the live stream. Please do not have hotspots going in the stands so that you can have like scouting data being shared. Utilize other technologies uh, for that. So just no Wi-Fi hotspots, no saving seats. Uh, you cannot put things on the seats to save them. Uh, and we will ask to remove those things. Also between each day, you have to take everything with you out of the gymnasium. So if it's a Saturday, Sunday event, Saturday at the end of the day on Saturday, everything has to go with you. You don't can't leave stuff, bring it back the next day, right? Some of you I know bring benches and scoring table type things and you have all sorts of stuff you set up. That's great. You got to go with you. You can bring it back the next day. Uh, safe, please. Safety glasses are required in the pits and on the field. Um, if you don't, um, we will have some there to purchase. We are no longer lending out there. Are, there's no more. There's a, not a safety glass tote that you can just borrow them and sign them out. Uh, we'll have some for sale, uh, but make sure your students know they have to bring their own safety glasses. Uh, do not be in the pits during opening or closing ceremonies. Um, it's not graciously professional. Uh, we ask that you all attend opening and closing ceremonies. Pick up after yourself, uh, help keep our venues clean. Don't wander. Uh, we have areas in the building that are pretty clearly marked where you can be and where we don't want you. So just don't go where uh, you're not welcome. Have fun, cheer loud. Uh, these events are incredible. Um, so enjoy them. Make friends. Uh, meet students from other teams, ask how they do what they do, learn from them, learn about their robots, learn about the technology they're doing, learn about how they go through their build process, learn as much as you can. These are things that you can definitely do at these events. Uh, other things to do, visit Scholarship Row, talk to the universities, the scholarship providers, uh, the um, attend a roundtable conversation. We will have multiple Roundtable conversations, parents, students, coaches, come to these conversations. They're great. We have lots of different topics out there from fundraising and team organization, LGBTQ plus of first, first like a girl. There's all sorts of great conversations that go on at our events. Take advantage of these and come uh, check it out. And of course, dance. We do lots of dancing at first. So please uh, dance and enjoy. Uh, the playoffs. The, um, we'll get into the playoff uh, here in a minute in terms of the new playoff system in FRC. Uh, 
However, alliance selections, every team is going to send one representative out by the field uh, as we wrap up the, the qualification rounds. And there'll be announcements in, in the pits and out on the field. And that student representative is responsible for being the um, uh, either the person, if they're in the top eight, for example, uh, the one picking, or they're going to be also responsible to be in line in, in case the team is picked. So with Alliance selections, the top eight teams will be brought out. We will then do a snake style draft. We'll go one through eight and then eight back to one uh, where the uh, teams will pick two other robots to be with them throughout the playoffs. The only rule in the Alliance selection process is that if you say no, then you are no longer eligible to be picked by anyone else. The example is if number one, picks number four and number four comes over and says, uh, we graciously decline the lovely invitation. Sorry. They go back. Now the number two seed and the number three seed can no longer pick the number four seed. Okay. That number four seed is now locked in as an Alliance captain. Now they're not locked in as fourth though, because if one picks two and two says yes, then we move everybody up one, three becomes two, four becomes three, and then nine comes out and becomes the eighth seat alliance captain. So we will do that process until we get eight alliances of three robots, and then we will go into the um, playoffs. Now, the um, please, please be ready to go. Please, you know, do your research, have your picks um, ready. Please be gracious. Um, for example, we gratefully accept your invitation is a, a very nice response in first to being picked. Uh, and then we respectfully decline your invitation uh, if you so choose to be uh, your own Alliance captain. Uh, the After the Alliance selections are made, um, the next four highest ranked teams not selected are usually asked to stay in the ready. Uh, in case there's a uh, robot that breaks and they need to be brought in. Um, the uh, Then after Alliance selections, the team captains, um, the Alliance captains, I'm sorry, the Alliance captains of each Alliance stick around for a few minutes. They talk to the referee. On page 122 of the game manual this year is the new tournament format. So what we have in the new tournament format. It is no longer um, like an NCAA bracket. It is a double elimination. And so from here you can see where uh, round one, the matches are set, by the way, with this new playoff model, we know exactly how long the playoffs will take. We know the number, exact number of matches, except for the finals. Uh, we know there will be at least two matches in the finals. There could be three. Uh, but here in these early rounds, though, uh, we will play match one, two, three, four. So one plays eight, four plays five, two plays seven, three plays six, just like always. That's the way it used to be. But now there will be a lower bracket and an upper bracket. So whoever loses in this first round comes down here to the lower bracket. The winners advance. Then the lower bracket, the, the, the teams that lost in this first round will play. And then once we get to round four, we will now have the winners here and the winners from this round two in the upper bracket. And then you can see how that works out. So it's a double elimination. The finals will be uh, traditionally best two out of three matches. Okay, but these are single elimination up here. These these will be single matches. Sorry, it is a double elimination. I shouldn't have said single elimination. Uh, it is a double elimination tournament. Tournament. But then, as we get here, though, in the lower bracket, those teams will be eliminated, and then uh, we will get to the the finals. Award ceremony. Uh, please do not be in the pits during the award ceremony. 
Uh, make sure to applaud for every team that wins an award. Every team works hard. Every team puts out their best effort. And uh, it is just a very graciously professional thing to do to congratulate teams uh, who win awards. If your team wins an award, make sure to follow the directions on how to go down to the field and go through the line. Please, no more high fives. Uh, there will The judges will have pom-poms and they'll be shaking the pom-poms. Uh, we are no longer doing high fives. Uh, so uh, please respect that. Uh, make sure to follow the directions. There will be a place for you to get a team picture taken. Make sure you share the news of your award with your community, with your local media, on social media. If you're a school-based team, make sure you get back to school the next day and have an announcement made. Uh, do a press release. We have templates, actually. Um, there's a link right here, and I'll have it in the description. Loadout. Teams are requested to be out of the pits by 6 p.m., the end of the competition. Be patient and safe as several teams will be attempting to load out at once, just like load in. Make sure to double check your pit area, the stands, etc. cetera. Uh, if you lose stuff, it, we may have a, um, a lost and found. And then during the season, we, we will take that back with us between events and bring it with us. Uh, but at the end of the season, um, those items are just, lost if in fact we have any lost and found items uh, if you have gotten home and you've lost something please contact dan leathers i've got his email here it'll be in the description uh, we can usually check our inventory when we arrive at our next event to see if it got thrown in with all that stuff so uh make sure to check out our social media if i can get onto the slide that has the information our our handle is the same for all of our social media, first in robotics, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And then our Twitch channel is also first in robotics. We do live stream all of our FRC events. So please make sure to share that Twitch uh, link out with all of your fans um, and your families and other folks that maybe can't make it in person. Uh, and there we go. So that's kind of a, an FRC event uh, in a nutshell uh, in 37 minutes. Uh, and uh, if uh, I know we've got uh, one person on, if you have any questions, Jennifer, uh, feel free to ask. No, thank you so much. This was real informative. Good. Um, oh, feeding um, your students. Uh, some of our events, you just, uh, coaches will be getting emails. So if you're a parent, uh, or you're a, a secondary type mentor and you're not like the first like head coach or, or coach two, please be asking those coaches. They will have been receiving emails from us. Um, if there are pre-orders uh, available, they'll be getting that those emails. They'll be getting that information about any kind of food pre-orders like pizzas or, or whatever might be available. Um, parents can, uh, or other folks with the team, uh, doesn't matter if it's parents or grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, can um, go out and get things, uh, bring in like, um, you know, large pizza orders or Subway. Um, some folks uh, make food and bring it in. The one big thing is no crock pots, no food warming type things. Um, the kind of funny thing is that we have this huge field that has a big electrical draw and the pits that have a big electrical draw. And we uh, prepare for all that. Um, but, and we typically don't blow circuit breakers, uh, but when we start plugging in crock pots, we, we do. So, uh, and they're also, um, besides the electrical piece, they're also just a safety concern in general. So no crock pots and no types of like hot plates or anything like that, um, from, uh, teams that are coming in, but there, but we usually will have access, uh, if, if the event is at, and this year we're all at, we're at all high schools, except for state. Uh, state's going to be at Anderson University. We usually do have access to the cafeteria. Uh, again, just like everything else with gracious professionalism, we ask that, that you know, if you're setting up tables for your team, just be nice and know that the cafeterias might not be able to seat everyone. So you may have some new temporary teammates for a day, uh, a day and, and, but please be welcoming to everyone and, and, uh, and share seats. Um, and and help us utilize the events and of course uh, clean up after yourselves. So um, there will usually also be concession stands available at the events. Uh, so students, it's usually smart for students to bring 
um, a little bit of cash. Um, we usually, um, depending on the event, we usually have fairly strict rules around uh, food and water in the pits. Um, a, a, a quick little piece of advice, have someone on the team, a couple of people probably on the team, um, have them regularly check in with your pit crew and your drive team uh, on making sure that they're drinking water. Uh, um, and that is something that um, those drive teams and those pit crews can end up going a long time and not even realizing it without drinking water or getting some kind of break. So please make sure that uh, those students that, you know, that's a safety concern as well. We don't want anybody passing out or, or whatever. So yeah, so double check, just stay on top of uh, on those kids and those coaches uh, Cause sometimes the coaches can get the mentors can also get um, it could be three or four hours and all of a sudden they, they haven't had anything to drink. So uh, definitely check in with that. Uh, the weather in Indiana can be really up and down. So as you, you all know uh, our events in March, we've had, we've had lots of snow at our events um, at some of our events we've had, you know, snow Mageddon's, and we've had, uh, you know, big thunderstorms. We've had, um, you know, we've had a few of our events where it's been like 70 or 80 degrees outside. Uh, so just make sure you're watching the weather, know what's kind of coming up and, and encouraging the kids to make sure that they're dressing appropriately for the weather, et cetera. Um, the big thing in the pits, keep in mind, is that the, the main thing in the pits is safety glasses and closed toed shoes. Um, and so just make sure that, uh, your your students uh, and your parents are aware too that if they want to come down and they've got um, like little siblings or or they've got friends or cousins they'd like to come down and see the pits, they are absolutely welcome to, as long as kids under the age of twelve are um, uh, chaperoned by an adult in the pits, and also everyone is wearing closed toed shoes and safety glasses. Uh, so those are just kind of the big things. Uh, just always be out listening for the. Um, uh, the announcements so that different opportunities um, and make sure your kids, we really want to make sure your students get to some of those student roundtable conversations. Uh, they're really fantastic conversations around all sorts of topics. And oftentimes we have a lot of students who miss out on them or don't hear about them. Um, we'll try to have those schedules plastered everywhere with QR codes and it'll be in the public schedules that go out. Um, and, and just ask a couple of your kids, Hey, go, go to that round table, listen in, see if there's anything that, you know, that you can come back and share with our team, make things better. Uh, and along the way, they may meet, meet some students and folks from other teams. And that's always another fun part of first. Uh, so I'm going to end the recording.